So we're waiting on the stainer to stain our pre-made casings that we made the other day. And that is gonna go around the door in one piece instead of having to set one piece on this side, one piece on this side, line up a miter at the top. It's all pre-assembled. What that means is we wanna keep moving. So what we've done is cut ourselves a little template block. This is actually three and three quarters. That is so we have a quarter inch reveal plus a three and a half inch piece of casing. And then we can come through and get our measurement for our base trim. So I'm just using my laser distance measure. I think that's like the most accurate way. 710 and a 16th. So I can go cut that, I install this. And then when our casing is done and ready to be installed, we just set it in and it should go right up against this base. Time will tell, but that's what we're working on right now. We should be able to take this piece, 710 and a 16th. Make sure my angle cut over here is good. So what I'm gonna do here is, since I like where this is, we're gonna go ahead and nail this. Six, thirteen, six. This will be the fun one. Okay, I trust you. you going to go straight in the middle. No, 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 no. Go, go uh, in line with the tool or with the material, like, like mm -hmm. that, so that you're going straight. In the middle? Where do you want it? Yeah, go down by my thumb. Go straight in. Okay. Wait, wait, oh man. Uh, how tall are these? Right, let's not do that, just go back through. Let's go back through this guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's some trust right there. Oh, for sure, dude. You can't trust you can your trust boy. Me. I trusted you. Who can you trust? Wait, what'd you have to trust me about? Careful, you're getting a little crazy. Can I show you how to open a shim box?
Boom, now you have your own little carrying case. Keeps them nice and organized, kind of like staples. And what is my biggest pet peeve, Greg? When we leave the staple box up in the lift and the staples get all ruined and then the staples fall out of the box. This, however, it never happens. Kapow. Oh, I love good shims. Look, when you're done, when you're done, you just hit the guy and put it back over. No, you don't. You actually, you don't. <laughs> get this damn condom off the top of my wood. You don't want your uh, shims spilling all over the place. <laughs> That's for me to worry about. No, you'd have to come from this corner to that corner mm -hmm. and this corner to that corner and it would tell you if you're good. But I lasered these walls so I know they're good. There you go. Okay, these can all be zippity zipped. All right, so what I'm working on now is we've been mitering all of our casings on our doors and windows, but the client wanted to do something a little extra in the main like area of the home, like the public space, your hallways through the main house, the great room, that sort of stuff. So what we're doing is we're doing these architraves, which was a word that I had no clue existed until this job. Um, it just shows you how, I guess, not versed in the lingo I am, but this is kind of a traditional look. I've seen this a lot in the old farm homes that I've remodeled back in the day and I'll show you what we're doing to make these and how we come up with them. So I've got this little template that actually my dad had given me when he did a job for his own home that we had built. Um, he did the same style and detail and so he had this mock-up done and I'm using it as a guide, not as an exact replica. So I'm doing it a little bit different in that we're using a six inch piece. So we've got a piece of five quarter by six inch and we're changing up just a little bit the dimensions. So what I've done is I've ripped down a inch and a, I think it's five sixteenths. So I've got a quarter inch exposure on all sides. And what I've done is I've routered over these edges to get a nice smooth edge. And now we're gonna go ahead and nail this on top. Now what I can do is I've got my little Martinez micro and I can set it right in here, bump it in, and that's gonna give me a perfect quarter inch exposure because of that little quarter inch nub. Now what I'm gonna do is just tack this on with my brad. And then because I cut these, I did in a quarter over there, I've got a quarter over here as well. Now we're gonna flip it over. So that's the first piece, the bottom. We're gonna take our next piece, which we actually only did a one round over side because the other side is gonna die into the top and final piece. Now with this, what I need to do is a 3 eighths of an inch overhang. So I'm gonna just use my square, line it up with 3 eighths, and then we're just gonna go down our way, making sure we're flush. And then our final top piece is once again uh, routered on all these edges because it's gonna be our final cap piece and this also is going to be a 3 8 of an inch overhang. And there we go. So that is the architrave for the top of our doors. So we're only doing our doors, not anything else. And here we've got our quarter inch reveal and then we've got 3 8 and 3 8 
That looks nice. All right, the day has come. The guys from Select Services have just showed up. They're getting their prep work done and they're gonna be installing the soapstone countertops. Now, I'm not gonna get in their way. Back here, I've got the GoPro set up. We're gonna let them come in here, do their thing. I hope that we did our job good enough and that it won't be too hard for them to get all these countertops set without any major issues. So here's the countertop. Natural stone, soapstone. That looks pretty cool. I think the big benefit to this is that it's uh, impervious to I think it's impervious to uh, heat and staining, so pretty cool. I'm excited to get it in there and see what it looks like, but you can see those are that's one piece, and that's the second piece for that island. Massive. Dude, I didn't hear any scratching or scraping at all, guys. That's what we tried. Yeah, that's, our... <laughs> that's probably a good thing, right? Yep. Do you guys, were you guys back in the day of like no computer aided or uh, CNC where you had to like do on site fabrication or no? Yeah, yeah. I, I used to uh, work for a different company before this. And oh man. It was a lot I used to cut walls. I used to. You had to like shave out the drywall in the back and stuff, and you guys didn't have to do anything. That sucker went in Perfect. pretty dang nice. Look at that. Huh, nice work, guys. I haven't seen the the paperwork from them that showed how like perfect our walls were or how mm, imperfect they were. Yeah, we I got to get that. You got to see that. Yeah, I mean they're gonna they're gonna tighten all that up and do all that. They just set it in there for now. I left this screw out so that they would have less stuff holding them back. So that that's gonna get connected and get solid. But I wanted to leave this free so they could work and do what they had to do. Nice seeing these countertops go in. Really cleans it up nice. Pretty close, Greg, too. On like, you know, for being like perfect. You're talking about two eight foot sections or whatever, trying to be perfect. Right. He's like, oh yeah, that's close. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you're setting this out, so they'll shim up one side, and all right. it takes is right. just a little bit just of. A little bit. Mm hmm. No, that's the first one. That's the big one. It's got the sink cut out. got to do all the finish work. That's probably the easy part, getting the pieces in. Does that help give you a little bit of leeway if the, the stone edge is not cut perfectly too, Nick? Uh, somewhat, yeah. Because it's going to fill that little bit mm -hmm. of void. Uh. Sorry, you, do your thing, do your thing. Um, yeah, but it's, they usually make it really tight, but if there's any inconsistency, it'll get cover up by yeah. the box. And then as your vacuums, you're just going to suck it together. Yep. Hmm. Whatever's not tight, we can make it tight with the grips. It's tight, it's just uh, red. Yeah.
How much time do you have to work with it? Between 30 minutes to an hour, depending oh. on how much hardener we use. So how long will those vacuums sit on it? Uh, for, the, for the whole time until it's, uh, until it's hardness. Oh, hardened. okay. Until the whole thing sets, basically. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Suck it right there. Look at the stuff ooze out, dude. <laughs> that thing just draws it right together, don't it? Yeah. Out of nails. Now this was the one kind of crappy detail that we had to deal with was uh, the slope of the ceiling coming down to these closets. But I think it worked out fine. This is the fun part. I've got to get this in here. Hey, Greg? Greg? Can I get your hand? In here, man, I need to flex this one into the, hopefully it stays together, you know? So try to keep it. What you need to do is kind of get that like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go kind of the little bit of the opposite way as we go in. Mm -hmm. gonna you need to kind of go, th yeah, like that. As we come in, you're almost there. Okay, well that was my joint. And it wasn't as bad as you might have heard it to be. <laughs> yeah, it did sound pretty bad. That's not a quarrel, dude. Uh-uh. No, we're golden. I guess that's what happens when you have multiple yeah, it is. forces and working against each other. Actually, it's kind of surprising how it stayed together. Like the top popped a little bit, but that's no big deal because I just put it back together now that it's in here. Mm -hmm. So cool, thanks, man. I just remembered something. <laughs> Holy cow! Okay, nice. Glad that worked out. We are really making headway on this interior. I've got almost all of the trim done. And yes, I've had some people on social media talking about the echo in here. This is still an empty, large space. The echo will go away once the carpets get put in, once the furniture comes in. Um, right now though, there's nothing stopping my voice from just going around here. We got hard surfaces. So yes, it is echoey, but we've done this before and the echo will go away. What I wanted to show you guys is I've been doing a lot of the trims, um, baseboard trims, door trims, but I wanted to show you what we, uh, what we like to try to do and something for you guys to consider next time you do a trim job. Now, specifically here in this hallway, we've got outside miter, outside miter, outside miter, another outside miter, another outside miter, another outside miter. And it's very important to lay out your trims so that you can have this. Now, look at the grain. Grain wraps all the way around. So we're using the same piece. Okay, 
Same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. I love this one, man. That one really shows up nice. The way that grain just wraps around that corner. And if we turn around, same thing here. Now that's something that might not matter to some people out there and they're never gonna see it, but it matters to me. And I think that somewhere along the line, somebody is going to be looking at this trim. They're gonna notice those nice, tight, clean miters and then they're gonna be like, holy cow, check that out. That grain wraps around. It's like the same piece, like it just folded over itself. And that's the way we try to do every outside miter. Um, actually we do, we do every outside miter that way. That way we can ensure that nice seamless look. One of the things that I've got to do up here on this stair, and it's kind of dark up here, so I'm just gonna show you, is I've got a piece that returns around this corner and it's mitered and then it's gonna die into the stair. And so what I've done is I've cut myself a 45 and then another 45 out of the same piece. And what you're gonna get is as you can see here, you're gonna get a nice seamless look where that grain wraps around. So once again, outside miter, it's the same piece. I'm going to glue this and fasten it and it's gonna look awesome. But before I do that, what I'm gonna do is take my little marker pen. Okay, this is a stain pen. This is, uh, came with the cabinets actually, but it's a really close match to our trim. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this edge And I'm gonna do that also here on my little piece, right here. And I'm sure you can figure out why I'm doing this. Uh, and then I'm also going to hit these little frays up at the top. Sometimes you get that on your saw and that's okay, it, it's okay. This is a, a little bit of a softer wood, it's not super hard. So you get that once in a while. I'm also gonna do it here on this piece. We're just gonna kinda of hand wipe that off so it's not uh, overdone, it's just filling in the light spots. And so now what's gonna happen is I can take this piece and when I put it together, like so, it's gonna be darker. So it's not gonna have that white wood look if it opens up. Um, and so now we can go ahead and glue and nail this together. Okay, now we're gonna make sure that this is still where we like it. I know some people are like, oh my God, your fingers, they're so close. Like I understand that it's close and there's always a potential, um, but that's why I place my fingers in areas that are least likely to have a, a blowback. This is only a one inch brad nail and I'm going into an end grain, it's very, very possible that it's just gonna go perfectly straight. Uh, and I always keep my fingers in a position that's, you know, a little bit safer. There we go, done and done. And uh, that was the best way we figured to do this. We could have brought this around and died in here to the stair, but since this is carpet, I just didn't think that would look right with the carpet kind of being cut around it. Thought this was a cleaner look and client agreed, so that's what we went with. All right, so now that we have this countertop in, um, when you do a little bit of work, because this is a natural soapstone. Natural soapstone, we're told by the installer that it's never perfect. Like when they make those cuts, especially on a slab this big, when they're trying to make a perfect joint in the middle for the two pieces, what they had to do was raise this side up a little bit more than perfectly level. So I set all of this off the laser. I could even put the laser up and I did, and it, it's an eighth inch higher on this end than the middle and the other end. So what they did was to get a good joint, they came in, they set the first piece, and then they raised the second piece up ever so slightly. And I've got a pretty good gap under here. Well, an eighth inch, and I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up instead of using a caulk. I've got some extra trim and I'm just gonna go ahead and place that. So I'm just gonna use this scribe trim that I have extra and that'll cover it up and detail it real nice. 16 5 8 I'm just gonna go ahead and start wrapping it around. So the other part is this, um, this concrete as it came this way was down about a quarter inch. So you can see right here, our 
post, I, I think that these should have been made longer for me to cut down, but they weren't. They were 34 and a half inches and I needed to bring them up, but I didn't want to have to trim around the base. So the decision was made to go ahead and put the gap up here. So that's another uh, reason that we're doing this because that's going to cover this up. And all I do is just start working on one end, make my miter, and then I'm just going to make sure I like the joint. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll just keep moving around. So I'll just make sure I like my miter. Then I can come over here, making sure that this doesn't move. This way I don't have to pull my tape measure out. I'll just hit the back side right where I'm going to cut. And then that will actually be the back side of my cut. That way we're all, always using the same piece to wrap around the miter too and you're getting very little waste. One of the final things that we've got to do here is this vent hood. Uh, client asked us to make a box and try to get it hung so that she can get an idea how she wants to finish it. Now, she did give me a picture, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this is what she was hoping to do. And we're gonna go ahead and build a box, and then it has a liner hood that goes inside. So we're gonna, we're just gonna build the box. We don't know exactly what the exterior facade is going to be when it's finished. She might do copper, she might do wood, we don't know, but she kind of wants to see it before she makes that decision. So what I need to do is build a box, make sure it works, because we've got girts running on this exterior wall. We don't have studs that we can screw into. We've got a girt right here, so that's nice. This is a solid girt, and then another one two foot higher, and then another one at the very top. But I don't have anything at the bottom where the actual fastening is being done. So we're gonna fasten it into the plywood that we're gonna use, and then we'll fasten the legacy to the wall, and it'll just kind of like be like a built-out box. Okay, it's gonna go right underneath there. Now up here, we should have girt running across the whole top. Should have it up on top, yeah. Um, just because I'm curious. This is 37 and a half, so 18 and three quarters. 18 and three quarters, okay. You know, just making sure. I'm assuming this looks a little goofy right now, guys. But we're trying to get a, a visual for our client so that they can get an idea where this hood's gonna be, how big it is. Um, and then we're gonna build off of this, the shape, whatever they go with. So we're just looking for kind of a bare minimum approach. All right, so now that we have this where we want it, I'm going to build the structure. So I wanted to leave these sides off because this is what's going to hold this where it's supposed to be. If I were to do this all and then put the box up, it might be tilted a little bit and off of level. So now I can put this piece here, push it tight up against the wall, and I can see that I'm right where I want to be. So this is good. This is going to get fastened um, as is, and I'm actually going to put a bunch of pocket hole screws here, glue this, screw it, and, and then nail it together. It's going to be great. Nice, that's good clamping power. I don't know. It's gonna be tight to a degree.
Okay, you hold the front grade because I'm gonna want to put those back lags on before we uh -huh. go too crazy. Cool. All right, that is the hood. So we are going to do additional work to this, but this is just to get it up, give my client an idea, and then we'll go through kind of the final design and then we'll just kind of tack it on from here. That's also gonna give us additional strength. And I don't know what the end result's gonna be. She's talking about maybe a, wrapping it in copper or wood, I don't, I don't know. 